Okay, we've got a good group together for our CE class today, but I've asked Alan Blood to take a few minutes at the start because we had a question come in from a survey. Now, just as a quick prelude to this, Alan, if you haven't been with me for a while, we do surveys at the end of every transaction that you do. If you take the time to fill out that survey and you can ask whatever questions you want or give me ideas of how I can improve the office, but it's been one of the ways that we've risen to be the number one company in the state is because we've got a lot of agent feedback over the years and I try to read everything that comes in. So one of them had a question for Alan requesting some training. And so I've asked Alan to come in and take a couple of minutes right now and cover one topic, and then maybe next week you can cover the second topic. But Alan, will you take it away for a little bit? All right, let's do it. So the question was uh, related to what a two-one buy down is, and is it a good idea, and how does it work? And so I think that's a that's a real valuable one to talk about. So let me talk to you about what a two-one buy down is first, and let's talk about whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. So a two-one buy down, the idea is that uh, the first year when you get a mortgage, the first year, your interest rate starts at 2% less than what the rate will eventually be. And the second year, your rate is 1% less than what the interest rate will eventually be. So if your start rate on your loan or your uh, note rate is 5.5%, for example, year one, you'd actually be paying interest at 3.5%, and then year two at 4.5%, and then year three, and from there on forward, you go up to the 5.5% rate. So it's a two one buy down, meaning you're getting 2% better, 1% better, and you're back up to the note rate on the third year. Here's the good piece of it. The good piece of it is your buyer is gonna have a lower payment for that first year and then the second year. Um, the downside is it's no free lunch. What's happening on a two one buy down is you're just prepaying the interest for those first two years. So that rate will cost you 2% or 3% more to get that two one buy down because you're prepaying the interest. The idea is as a seller, you could go in and say, okay, we're going to offer a 2-1 buy down to our buyers and we're going to pay an extra 3%. So let's say you're selling a house that's $500,000 and you're going to offer a $15,000 credit for a 2-1 buy down. And the buyer gets that loan and it sounds really good. That might be a good marketing approach because it sounds really good. But I'll tell you, if you're on the other side of this, on the buyer's side, the numbers are really not great. And let me, let me give you some examples of what I mean. Um, number one, what you're doing is you're putting a buyer into a loan where unless they're in a, an income situation where they're expecting to have a significant improvement in income over that first three year period of time, they're going to find themselves making a much, much higher payment three years down the road, really on the third year than they would on those first two. And if they're a first time home buyer, um, no matter how many times you tell somebody, hey, plan for this payment to go up, they don't plan for the payment to go up. And then they find themselves in a bad situation. And so that might not be great for the client for the long haul, number one. And number two, there may be a better way to accomplish getting them into an affordable payment that's a longer lasting payment. So figure you're buying a $500,000 house that the seller is going to give you $15,000 or 3% for a 2-1 buy down. If instead you repurpose that money towards just buying the rate down. So right now a par rate on a 30-year fixed um, 740 credit score borrower with 5% down, so a really good client with 5% down, your par rate today is about 5.2%, par meaning you're not paying any points. Well, if you go to a rate where you're paying 3% to buy the rate down, in fact, you can't even pay 3% to buy the rate down. It's not an option because it gets too out of compliance. But imagine you could, your rate gets better by a full 1%, and you can get pretty close to that. So if you have the seller paying 3% in fees, well, you use two of it to buy the rate down, and then use the other 1% to pay the rest of the fees that decrease the borrower's cash. That rate goes better when you're paying that two points up front by almost 1%. But now you have that rate fixed for 30 years rather than a teaser rate for year one, a semi-teaser rate for year two, and then a much higher rate for the period of time. So you're using the same money, you're purposing it different, and you get a better long-term solution. The only thing you lose by doing that is in year one, your payment would have been better because you've had a rate 2% lower instead of 1% better. But the trade-off being that if this client has this house for any period of time, they have a much lower consistent payment and they've used the same money. So if you're a seller and you wanna use that as an advertising tool, like any other advertising tool, it could be good. Um, it, it'll catch people's attention. Obviously it did, Eric, with your agent who asked about it. And I've had other agents ask about the same thing. From a buyer's perspective, if they do the math and they run the numbers on it, it's really hard to justify that option is the best option. The other trick on this is from a buyer's perspective, the start rate on a 2-1 buy down loan will be higher than the start rate on a 30-year fixed rate loan. 
right? So you start as a higher point and then you buy it down by two points and then 1%, or you just start at that, that lower rate to begin with and buy it down by, by the, the same amount off the bat. And you end up with a lower overall rate even after a three-year period of time. So, so you, said, you said that uh, if I'm if I could pay three percent down, which I can't because it puts me out of compliance, how much can I actually pay to? What's the maximum I could pay to buy my rate down? The maximum you can pay and still be compliant to buy a rate down on a conventional loan is two points. So okay. right now, if you bought that rate down by two percent your rate is better by like 0.95%. So the two point buy down improves your conventional rate for a good credit score borrower by almost a full 1%. And then it stays that way for the life of the loan. So, and if, then I if, wanted, did, so if I wanted to market this as a seller, if I wanted to present this as a marketing option for my sellers, we could offer a, a, a 2% or a two point buy down of their rate, which would drop it down about a full percent. Yeah. Help help people qualify and it'll actually save me money. It'll save them money over the long term, and it saves me money because it's going to save them that 1% over 30 years instead of 3% over three years. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it, 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 good, good, good thing to potentially, potentially use for a listing as a buyer, I would look at other alternatives. Um, just to kind of feed this in the background, the other question I get asked about a lot that ties into this is adjustable rate mortgages, which is the alternative to a 2-1 buy down. Right now, the rate on a 30-year fix at all cost levels is the same or better than the rate on a 5- and a 7-year arm at all cost levels, meaning there's no justification for an adjustable rate mortgage right now. Um, so I'm seeing that advertised as well in the same way. People say, hey, get a lower rate with this adjustable rate mortgage. You can do the same rate with the same cost on the 30-year fix. It's just not new, so it doesn't sound as interesting from a marketing perspective. So before I worked for you, Alan, I worked for a company that did primarily adjustable rate mortgages. And interestingly enough, they never showed me a rate sheet other than what their company provided. You were the very first person out of, I think, four lenders that I worked for that showed me a back-end rate sheet. And that was the first time that I saw that that banks and lenders were making points on the back end that they were not disclosing to people. And, and quite well, frankly, quite frankly, um, most of the loan officers weren't aware that they were selling rates higher than par and that their bank was making bank on the back end of all of these people. So I really appreciate and have appreciated over the years your approach to discussing what par rate is and how you can sometimes save money by going a higher rate because you yeah. don't, you know, I mean, it all depends on what your goals are. If you're going to stay there forever, it makes sense. Pay a little bit more, get that lower rate. You're going to live there for 30 years. If you know you're going to move in two or three years, take the higher rate and save yourself $7,000 in closing costs and you'll come out ahead financially. And, and I like your approach. So I appreciate you taking the time today okay. to do this. Let me interject one more quick point yeah. here. Um, the, other, the other argument for these two-one buy-downs is, well, what if you're only going to live in the house for a couple of years? Isn't that a good idea because it saves you all this money? Absolutely no. Instead, just pay less for the house. So if you're seeing this as a buyer's agent, just go and say, okay, well, we're not going to take the two-one buy-down at all. If your client's only going to live in the house for two years, for three, maybe just reduce the price by 3%, and it's going to be a better overall deal for them. So don't get caught in the trap. Thanks, Eric. Sorry, that was my last point. No, that was a great thought. Thank you.